live from the warehouse, it's GM Patty Holtz. Um, this is an update in late May of 2021. Um, Orioles record, not so great, 19 and 35. Um, but we started 0 and 10. Uh, March and April were quite rough for us. Um, I can show you the, uh, my mouse will cooperate. Here we go. Um, so we went 0 and 7 in March, 8 and 17 in April, 11 and 11 in May, though. And, you know, after last year, our run differential being more than um, double the next worst team, um, we're 13th in AL runs scored and 11th in runs allowed. So, like, it's respectable. Terrible win loss record to start the year, but the team is respectable. It's not a total bomb um, at this point. Um, did make a pretty big trade. Um, and so that's the biggest part of this update is um, that traded for Luis Castillo from the Reds. Um, now people who follow Major Leagues remember Luis Castillo became probably like a top 20 pitcher in the majors this, in 2019. In real life, he put up like over four wins above replacement. Um, so he put up 4.0. Yeah, so... But here in out of the park world, um, he you know in 2020 he only put up 1.2 WAR. Um, his strikeouts are down. His homers were up. Um, his ERA was up over a run. And so, you know, his stock has dropped some. But he's still you know a year removed from being, uh, you know, an ace, a number one starter. He's only 28. Um, and so the Reds had a couple of pieces I really wanted and seemed to kind of had soured on him, which you know. Maybe they know something I don't. My scout still thinks he's a good number two starter at the age of 28. Maybe he's going to decline quickly, but I thought he's worth taking a risk on. He's also, like, maybe my favorite pitcher to watch in real life in the majors, so that has something to do with it, too. Um, but I also got an outfielder who's 23 in A-ball. He can play some center field, so I got him. Don't expect anything from him. Um, this guy could be a major league relief piece if he can sort out his control. His control is um, pretty bad right now, but if he can improve it just, like, a little bit, he might be... Uh, bullpen option because he's got really good stuff um, and decent movement. Um, so what did I give up? The main piece was Javi Guerra, who I'd acquired from the Padres year before as a relief prospect. And, you know, all signs point to him becoming a dominant closer. Um, you know, I'm willing to give up a guy who's going to be dominant for 60, 70, maybe 80 innings a year um, to give up to get a really good starter who's going to pitch, um, you know, 180 innings per year for me. Um, I, I feel like I can always find bullpen options much harder to find than starting pitching options, just like real life. Um, gave up another decent bullpen piece, John Romero, who would come over from the Nats in the Michael, um, Michael Givens trade. Um, and he was doing fine for me. He was fine in Norfolk and Baltimore last year. Again, you know, looks like they're using him as an opener. Um, you know, he's pro he's a very usable major league bullpen piece, but not something that's going to stop me from acquiring a guy who I think is a really good number two, maybe a number one starter on my team. He's definitely number one. Um, another pitching piece I gave up was David Parkinson. Um, he had come over from the Phillies in a trade last year, I think the Tanner Scott trade. Um, he's been very good in uh, Louisville since he got there. He's going to be a major league pitcher. Uh, you know, he's going to be back-end rotation depth unless he takes a major step forward. And I just have too many. I acquired so many pitchers that my AAA and AA are just stocked. And he wasn't even really being used. So he's going to be a usable piece probably. But, again, not a piece that's going to keep me from, uh, you know, trading for trading for Luis Castillo. Um, Richard Urena, he was a utility infielder who was actually on my major league roster this year. Just He's good defensively, but, again, utility guy. Molina was a minor league utility guy who probably could play in the majors. But, again, you know, so I gave up a dominant closer, a good relief piece. A guy who's probably going to be a rotation piece in the majors maybe. Um, and then two utility guys. Um, and so, yeah, they really liked um, Javi Guerra and Romero. Those were the two guys that they really were insistent on being in the trade. Um, and Parkinson, they were pretty high on, too. So they really liked the three pitchers that they got. Um, and obviously, we were a little low on Castillo after his year last year, and his start this year wasn't amazing. Um, so Castillo has two more years of team control, arbitration, um, he was estimated to make about $5 million arbitration next year and about 65 the following year. So two years of team control, um, but I locked him up. Um, I bought out those two arbitration years where he's supposed to get about $11.5 maybe total. So I locked him up for um, 
11 million total for those two years. And then pretty low risk here. Um, you know, while starters at 31, 32, it can get ugly fast, especially in this game. Um, I don't sign starters too often past that age point. Um, but I've got buyouts on both these. So bought out two free agency years, 8.5 and 10 million, um, w both with $1.5 million buyouts. So pretty excited about that. Um, you know, I think he's going to be, you know, there's cost certainty here and he's a very solid rotation piece, um, uh, moving into a time when I'm hoping he can tend. Um, and I hope to develop a lot of those pitchers, but if I can get kind of like number two, number three starters at reasonable salary thing uh, uh reasonable salary i like to fill in with a couple of those two around hopefully um really good starters that i develop um some other trades um this looks like the biggest one haney went to the rays um for brousseau who's a good hitter and a pitching prospect minor trade between the reds and the blue jays and then atlanta got adams a closer and gave it some prospects to do that um nothing else really had happened there just a quick look at the major league team in terms of what's going on. Everybody's up now. Bannon's up. Mount Castle's up. Um, you know, the party has started. Austin Hayes is off to an awesome start. He's played in almost every game. 21% um, above league average with runs graded plus. Um, Austin Hedges is on pace to play 81 games and put up like two and a half wins above replacement. I don't expect that to last, but he's been amazing. Mount Castle has heated up. He's definitely heating up. Um, he started a little slow, but he's above average now. Only 35 games I played the service time game, and he was down. Um, DJ Stewart's um, in part-time duty, hitting fine. Ryland Bannon also started slow and is starting to heat up a bit. Um, Park, as a Rule 5 guy, 95 ones, um, run created plus and a really good fielder. I'll take that. Cordoba was hurt. He's back, and he's doing okay. Richie Martin started really hot at the plate, but has cooled off some. Santander's been hurt a bit. He just got back. Um, you know, Toro, Mullins, not great here. Um, Luke Roy's been terrible. He's asked, actually asked for a trade because he's not starting. Um, like, dude, you signed for two and a half million. I don't know why you're expecting to have a lockdown on the starting job. Um, and Jared Oliva, the other Rule 5 guy, have been, guy has been absolutely terrible. But I'm going to give him some more time, you know, this year. Well, I expect to be better in the win-loss column than last year. Like I said, though, it's more to just evaluate pieces moving forward and then next year really try to become competitive with more prospects coming up and maybe signing uh, a few major league pieces. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to let Oliva bomb out if that's what he's going to do, but I'm going to give him time. Um, Pitching-wise, um, let's see. Michael Bauman's been pretty solid again. Um, you know, 0.5 war and 11 starts. Um, not amazing, but, you know, he seems solid. He was great... Uh, the first half, of, the first couple months last year, and then got hurt and came back was terrible. He's bounced back. Luis Castillo, um, here's what he's done in the starts for me. He's started f five times, um, a 4.2 ERA, 4.20 ERA. Wow. Um, and he's 30 innings. He's striking out a million people, not walking many so far, but the home runs are up a bit this year. Um, but again, 0.5 wins above replacement and five starts is fine. You know, if you make 30 starts at three. That's three wins above replacement pace. Um, I'll take it, although hopefully he'll be a bit better. Um, Dean Kramer is a guy who was um, – he started terribly, and he went to the bullpen, threw a bunch of – had a bunch of really good outings, and now is back in the rotation. Um, Blyer is – you know, he's a, just a veteran guy who's hanging around. Um, J.D. Hammers, my new closer, he came over from the Phillies last year in a trade. De La Cruz came over from the Cubs last year in a trade. Um, you know, a lot of these guys are guys who came over in trades or were waiver wire claims, like DeCaster was waiver wire. The rest were trades, other than like Armstrong, Means, they're obviously in the system already. John Means has had a terrible start to the year, um, and he actually got moved out of the rotation but came back in when Corey Abbott, um, who was my number three starter, he's out for two weeks, so Means is back in the rotation. Um, Brandon Bilak came over in that Mancini piece, He's been up and down a bit, called him back up um, when Abbott got hurt. Um, so we'll see what he can do in long relief. Um, hopefully he can straighten this out a bunch because that's not too good. You got a 6.5 ERA and your fit is almost two runs higher than that. So he's been bad and lucky somehow. Um, all right. So that's, that's the uh, major league staff, uh, major league team in terms of uh, – prospects um things are going pretty well um Lacey's obviously out for the year Rutschman's doing well though um he's 
I got a well 112 runs created plus. He's cooled off a little bit lately. He was much higher than that earlier. 3.6 war. Um, I'm sure, you know, not worried about him. He'll be fine. Um, Rylan Bannon, we talked about. Trevor Larnach is ripping the ball. 481 um, slugging percentage, 375 on base. He's doing well. I'm looking forward to him coming up and playing right field next year. He's in left right now. I'm just trying to boost his rating. Martez was the international prospect. He's still in the complex. Um, DL Hall's having a really good start to the year. He's number 180 prospect in 81 prospect in baseball. He's on pace for three wins above replacement. K's look good. Walks are good. Home runs look good. ERA is good. Um, yeah, happy to see that. Nick Matan, I think, could be a dude. Um, I think he could, you know, he came out of nowhere after I traded him. He was having a good year, and I traded for him in July for Tanner Scott, and he came out of nowhere to be a number 91 prospect. I'm trying to get that shortstop rating up, but it's just not happening. I don't know. I thought, honestly, with that range and arm and double play ratings, his um, shortstop rating would come up, but I put him there for a bunch last year, put him there to start the year this year, and it just hasn't budged. Um, so honestly, at this time, I might give him some second base experience. And he also has some good outfield ratings, so give him some corner outfield eligibility too because it looks like his bat's going to play, man. Uh, you know, last year, 141 and 120 between two different teams, OPS+. plus. This year, he's off to a hot start with a 132. Yeah, I think he there, he's going to be a major league bat, it would appear. Um, Bowser was my first-round supplemental pick last year. Hasn't started. These guys are in the major league level. Gunnar Henderson is a top prospect for sure. Off to a bit of a slow start um, as a 19-year-old in A-ball with a 91 OPS plus, but, um, you know, uh, not too worried about that. I think he's going to be just fine. Um, Adam Hall is off to a fine start um, in Bowie. He will hopefully continue to be uh, adequate at shortstop because, man, it is hard to find good fielding shortstops who can also hit. Yusnel Diaz is off to another terrible start, 248 slugging percentage. He had a terrible year last year in AAA. I don't know what's going on with him. With all my outfield depth, maybe it's time to see if a team is still really high on him because he's, you know, he's not going to be able to play center field for me. The 45 rating is not going to do it. Um, and I've tried to bump it up, and he hasn't. And, you know, he was awful last year um, in 98 games, and he's bad again this year. He did come up for one game when I needed to fill in, I think, because of a day-to-day -day injury. I can't remember why, but he hit a home run. <laughs> um, you know, and it's not that he's mad that he's in the minors. His expectation is not, you know. So I don't know what's going on with him. Maybe I should give him a little more time at the majors. Just see, maybe, maybe he's just bored down there. But man, he's been bad. Um, and let's see, Eastman. He's pitching decently in AAA. Um, he's one of my better starters in AAA right now. Came over from the Phillies last year. McKenna is ripping the cover off the ball in AAA. Um, Justin Steele was a trade last year and he's on a rehab assignment recovering from, I think a torn rotator cuff. Um, so yeah, that's that one thing that is different this year in the game is if you notice, um, it's becoming more trend now in the majors that teams are signing guys in before they're ar arbitration eligible or when they become arbitra arbitration eligible and they're signing them to long-term deals. Um, you know, the deals that are kind of painted to work out for both the team and the player. The player's guaranteed a ton of guaranteed money, um, and the teams get the arbitra get the free agent years for cheaper than they would have. Um, and doing it earlier guarantees the player income regardless of what happened. So in, in Out of the Park, generally those extensions are hard to do, but the players you do it with, it's realistic. Um, you know, I've done it in previous ones with top prospects, and I brought them up, and their first year of Major League Service time, I signed them like an eight-year deal. But buying out those free agent years is still expensive. It's like $15 million I remember spending on guys, you know. And while if they if they become elite, that's a bargain, but it's still a ton of money to guarantee to a guy who hasn't proven anything at Major League level. But this year, one, more players seem willing to do it, and two, it's just not realistic. You know, Rutschman is a top prospect in baseball, and he's willing to sign a seven-year deal um, worth $17.3 million total. You know, I mean, this is a free agent year here. $3.8 million with the player option. Last year of arbitration, 2.8, 3.8. If he pans out, he's going to be making over $10 million in these years, and his free agent years are going to cost way more. Um, I have not seen it be this unrealistic in the game. I posted to the message boards, and people basically said they don't sign extensions people until they're eligible for arbitration. At that point, it becomes more realistic. I haven't had this problem before. Um, it's a little frustrating as a small market team to see that because I'm not going to exploit the game and sign these kind of deals. 
um, even though I could. It's also available to me for Austin Hayes and Ryan Mountcastle right now. I could lock all of them up for like six or seven years for less than $20 million total each. Um, so that's a little a little annoying to not have that option to get that cost certainty. Um, but, you know, once they're arbitration eligible, I guess, I guess I'll wait till then and then do it. But I'm not going to exploit this uh, shortfall of the game that it's just annoying because it hasn't been like that in the years past. It's been good um, in years past. So anyways, um, the last thing is just the rookie draft is coming up. And there is not a clear-cut superstar, according to my scout. Um, here's the OSA mock draft. Um, Steve Bradford is who I'm projected to take. Um, OSA, you can see here, thinks much higher of him than my scout. Um, my scout, you know, I mean, this is a fine major league pitcher, but... I don't know if I'm going to pay a $17, $17 million bonus demand for a guy with that. Um, the best hitter available is um, Jamie Chisholm. Um, I wonder if he's real life related to Jazz. I don't know. Um, again, another guy who always is higher on than my scout, but my scout likes him. The bummer of him is he's pretty much locked into being a second baseman. With this arm, he's not going to play shortstop and that range, um, and that arm he's not going to play third base. His, out, his arm is not good enough to play in the outfield. So I don't love drafting a guy that I know is just locked into second base. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's not, you know, here's a guy, Bashar. Again, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm spending the first round pick on this guy. There's not a guy that I really, really, really want. So I started looking around at like shortstops and center fielders because having a great fielder at those positions who can also hit is just such... A huge advantage in this game you know here's the next shortstop prospect I mean, with this turn double play and arm i don't know that he's gonna be a very good shortstop he might be okay but he's not gonna be great so you know here this is the first center fielder i think the first outfielder projected to go um he might be able to do that but again he's projected to go 23rd i don't want to reach on him just because i see him as a future center fielder um you know my scout says his ceiling is a bench roll which does not jive with the ratings he has well, I guess, yeah, I mean, I don't know. If he was 50s and 55s, he's probably better than bench. Um, so not real excited about the draft, to be honest. Um, you know, and obviously player development will come into play. Um, some of these guys will improve, et cetera. But there's not a Rutschman or a Harper or I forget who the shortstop is. Was it Martin? The Tigers took first overall last year. Um, you know, last year there were four to five guys I was pretty excited about having a chance to draft. This year there are zero. Um, I'm probably leaning go towards going Chisholm um, just because there's not an advanced college bat available, really. Um, and my scout doesn't think that highly of the pitchers. And while it sucks to draft a guy who's just locked in to be a second baseman, I mean, you know, he might be able to be, like, okay at other positions, but he's not going to be elite defender. And, you know, there's a lot of variables here. There's a lot of uh, could go wrong with um, – an 18 year old even if he is projected to be great a lot can go wrong there so that's the draft i'll do an update on the draft which is in like a week or two but that's where the team is now you know luis castillo is on board he's extended um most of the guys are up um and yeah that's where things stand and hopefully the team will continue to play 500 ball like they did in may